Okay, folks, welcome back to Let's Play the Space Bar. I'm Mysterious JG. Here's the deal. Okay, finally got this worked out. This is our barge. And we can't... We have to take the barge into this place, I think. Because if we go on a regular boat, we'll be spotted by the watchtower. So we've been using this barge to get past watchtowers the whole game. And, um... So what we have to do is we have to block this police boat with this, but we got to get this down here somehow. So, now that we've got a new objective, let's get on that. Now, well, now I think we're good. Maybe I'll put it all the way back in the corner here. But there we should be good. He's blocked in. Our barge is here. Current's moving that way. We're good to go. I did this off camera, something very similar to this. It worked. So let's get in the boat. There we can see the barge. We will untie this. And we will turn on the motor. We'll go back to the barge. We will tie this. We'll turn off the motor. Now, when I off screen this, we still got caught. I think it's because the rowboat was hanging onto the boat. This bugs me. You've got to sink the rowboat, apparently, in order for us to. Um, because we've had this drill that we've never used. We've got to sink the rowboat in order to get past this last guard tower. There was a boat hanging on to the side of this thing the whole time. Every other guard tower, it hasn't been a problem. Maybe if we look at the map... Mm, yeah, no, the, the guard towers aren't marked on the map. I'm trying to think maybe, maybe the rowboat had been on the blind side to the towers before. But no, we have to drill a hole through this boat and sink it. Jag, I drilled through that board, but now the batteries are gone. As the robot sinks, you lead Barman and Parker into the bridge. Barge. So now we're stuck on the barge. We're stuck on band-aids and band-aids stuck on me. Got anything new to say? I could stash the drill and then, uh... Last night was really excellent. Yeah, okay. Well, perhaps... Nope! Ask him about the, uh... Signaling mirror. Hey, let me take a look at that. I clearly need more beauty sleep. Yeah, nothing new we're getting out of either of these guys. So, now, uh, we're on the barge. The... Police boat should be blocked. We should be moving in the correct direction, and we sank the boat, so this should be it. We should be well on our way. Where are we at now? Floating city, city limits. Loading dock, one Herbert ahead. Okay, this ought to be it. Yay, we can get out now. I hope. We're now at the dock. Loading dock. This should be very close to the end of this flashback, I'm hoping. This flashback hasn't pissed me off as much as some. But, um... Shangri-La leaflet. Pecking crates. Looks 
Parker remarks that it sounds like just what he needs after this ordeal. Read the leaflet. Scrunch your feelers into the emerald sand as the warm pink waters lap at your toes. Stroll along the beaches, picking your own fruits and sipping a Nurswizzle. Bask on the marble beaches by day, then pour yourself into a trauma suit for the glamorous nightlife. And it looks like we just got eaten by a velociraptor. You were telling me about your escape from Macromati? That's a no problem, though. Velociraptor, eh? Let's see if there's anything else to interact with before we... Forklift, examine. This sweet piece of machine you could probably lift an entire blubber beast. Okay, but the forklift is locked. You're just messing with me into thinking I've got another one of those puzzles to solve. So we've got the sandwich that those guys like, right? So let's, um... Oh. Toss the sandwich into the water and then open the crate. See what that does. We still get eaten. Telling me about your escape from hmm. Maybe that wasn't uh, the kind of beast we thought it was. What about the pack? I am. I am certain that there's going to be a Grendel, whatever here because uh, we know how to deal with those. Mm, like a vase of fresh picked flowers. Okay. It's too dark to see inside. Let's open and see. That's okay. We got killed by something that smells like flowers. Okay, so apparently we've got to figure out which of these boxes is going to be safe. If any. Mm, like a vase of fresh picked flowers. But that would mean that... That would mean that this is the one. So we've got the sandwich. We know they like the sandwiches. Oh. Got to hold it up to there. Now maybe I can throw it into the water. But he had to smell it first. I bet that's what it is. Yep. Oh, 
completely empty. Everybody squeeze into this crate. Uh, mm. uh, Ooh, uh, ah, oh, pub fresh uh, too. Uh, uh, it smells of grental beast in here. Who knows what sort of germs and pests it left behind? Hey, you're bossing my hair. Okay, so you start to go out of the crate when you think of your footsteps. After closing the crate, it turns out to be the water. Well, I don't get it. What are we supposed to do now? <laughs> I guess we just wait until the package gets picked up. Jag, I dropped the envelope. It's out there on the floor. No problem, Celia. I'll just go out and get it. I was wondering where that was. Yeah, because it wasn't in my inventory there for a second. Oscar Hammermug. He is, but it's a good thing we shot this guy. He was probably a rebel spy on his way off oil. Oh no, they killed our alpha male whose name I can't remember. Perhaps you should resort to using this <laughs> too. He died heroically while wandering around trying to pick up an envelope. Oscar Hammermug, eh? Tragic. And the... Uh, the whiny but less amusing husband survived. The one who was actually doing work, but being kind of a pain about it. But, you know, at least actually doing something. The wife husband survived, whereas the child husband did not. And. game? Are we, uh, are we back in business? Back in black, back in black. Hey, Alias, what's up? Uh, what? Oh, damn it, game, don't crash out of... No, no, don't crash out of me now. <laughs> I didn't get a new... Um, let's give it a second here to think. He's lost its music or something. This is no good. I'd have to do all that shit over again. Not that much shit. We saved when we got into that last room there. But this is still annoying to me. Okay. Hey, ladies. What's up, biatch? Alright, well, I guess... Uh, Gone a couple of videos without a crash now, so I guess we were due. So of course, mean that I'm going to need to uh, I'm going to need to swap discs. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Got to swap discs again, and then we'll have to swap discs again after that. I think it was disc 3 we were using. Ugh. I think about this LP, and the thing about the puzzle LPs I'm, I'm starting to, to realize is that I'm actually having to think, which is preventing me from saying goofy things to amuse you. I do apologize for that. I think it was state 2. But they all of these save states should be on the same disc at this point, so... Come on, game. Work with me here. Covering up the human and uh, the human's face. And here you go. Seraphin, seraphin, whatever guy's mouth. And 
the weird thing about this is there's only like two species of all the aliens are showing here. There's only like two of them that I recognize as being species that you interact with in this game. That was apparently the wrong save state. So let's try. Let's try three. That sounds right. Yeah, that was weird. I noticed that, and was wondering if I'd made a mistake, but the envelope was in my inventory, and then suddenly it wasn't. Oof. It smells like flesh rotting on a carcass. We never ended up using the uh, candle and the signal lamp, or the shades. The only piece of emergency equipment we're using is the sandwich. <laughs> Sorry, folks, gotta... Gotta threaten to crash my whole system again. I'm trying to... I'm trying to expose Can Studio so I can see how far this video is. If only I hadn't dropped the envelope. Jag off. Oh, I, I didn't mean to skip as much as I did. I thought I was just going to skip a very small piece. But we skipped the beautiful um, glamour shots of her dead husband, like, you know, child man floating around on a sky background, which is a beautiful moment. <sighs> oh, well. So, I'll save the game here before... Horrible crash. Now, I don't know what kind of a deal we're going to make with her. We had a specific thing in mind that we needed to get out of Fleabix. And uh, we traded that for the information he needed. With her? I don't know. Alias seems to be kind of into her, but I don't think this is the kind of game where we're going to get a, you know, love interest necessarily. Not to mention she's married, and she's grieving for uh, one of her two husbands who died. She's grieving for the husband of hers who died. She has another husband who's still alive. That's... Yeah. Okay. So let's save and hope for the best. What's up? She likes you better now that you've actually like talked to her a little bit. Feel her out. Yeah. I know who it is you need to contact. Perhaps we can help each other. What could I do for you? I'm what, looking for somebody here. What can I do for you? What can I do for you? And now I know No problem, Alias. I haven't seen anything yet, but I'll keep my eyes open. Great, Celia. And you should get a hold of Oscar Hammermug. At Helios Agricorp. I can't thank you enough, Alias. My people might be saved. I'll help you any way I can. I'm not at all suspicious of the fact that you suddenly somehow know uh, my secrets, but okay. What the heck? What do you think, Zell? For the trisex day, I mean, do you think she and I... Ah, uh, tell your hormones to take a rest, Alias. She only goes for guys with blue skin. Now we don't. I don't see her other husband anywhere around here, sadly. So um, I forget about that. And we already dealt with them. There's Devin Seven of Apoctal, but I don't want to talk to him just yet because while wandering around, I found something of interest. For one thing, we have an amusing 
like, ooh, it's space bathroom. See, there's all different kinds because there's all different species. I also saw this, a sick seraphin. Never seen a seraphin turn in that particular shade of green. He looks like he's had a few too many drinks or a few too many jolts of current or whatever. No, not the couch. No, I didn't mean to leave the room. Damn it. I wanted to actually uh, try to talk to him to see what happened. Better leave him alone unless you want some half-digested seraph and stew all over your shoes. However, we do have plastic fruit. Tackier than a box of pushpins and only slightly more appetizing. Let's stash that. Remember what happened when we tried to steal her fruit? She shot us. Now what do we have here? What if we were to disguise our theft of her fruit? By using a fake fruit. Because des I desperately want to steal her unborn child. That's what I'm saying. I want to steal her unborn child and eat it. <laughs> Yay, she drops the fruit. Is this the real fruit? That's the real fruit. Can we put it back? Doesn't appear to be any way to hang the fruit on her branches. Alright? We can't even do that, even if we wanted to do the decent thing at this point. Once she's gotten aroused, her baby's gone forever. So let's put the fake fruit there. Do they have locusts in here? We popped on the fake fruit, and now we can leave. Yes, and we leave, and we live, and we've got her fruit. We have stolen her baby. We are apparently the dangos who stole her baby. Uh, so, what now? What now? Uh, we can do the Devon 7 flashback. It's kind of a weird one. Um... And you're kind of... Well, you know what? I want to do that next because I remember what you get when you win that one. And also, there's going to be some some just wandering around dialogue stuff. This is very time-sensitive. It's one of the only ones of the flashbacks that really involves you being fast. So, um... I think we can wander around, just look at stuff in his uh, flashback and read stuff and have fun and chortle. And then I'll probably have to load in order to have time to finish this flashback correctly anyway. But let's talk to Devon Seven of Apocdal. He looks rich, bored, and arrogant. In other words, a typical Seraphon. It better not. Seraphon's going to afford to lawyers, top lawyers. Hi, my name's Alias No. How are you? Hello, Alias. I am Devon Seven of Apocdal. I suppose I'm well. I should be. I pay 80 megazox a year for my medical care. <laughs> He's a little bit nicer than uh, his associate that we spoke to earlier. Ask him about himself. I just have a brief layover at this spaceport. I'm on my way to inspect Armpit 3. I purchased it last week. I want to make sure it's in good shape before I sign the closing papers. Let's ask him about ourself. At the university, I minored in the culture of lesser races. I spent the classes <laughs> devoted to human culture, viewing the films of Jerry Lewis. I calculate that I am the 4,329th being to comment on your resemblance to this icon of slapstick humor. <laughs> the cultures of lesser races. Oh, you're a fun guy there, Devon Seven. Oh, your inquiries are boring me. Please direct them to one of my assistants. So order him to uh, give me investment advice. I would sooner obey a command from my own robo butler. All right, fine. Let's chat with him. Alias, as per the field procedure manual, you should insert disc one at this time. Sounds like a plan. See, now, I mean, he's rude. He's kind of he he referred to the class as a culture of lesser species, but that's just what the class has called it, ain't his fault. And uh, he's not gonna go around taking orders from us. And when you start giving him orders, he doesn't like it. But otherwise, he just you know, compared to the guy who had us killed for bothering him, he's positively genteel. I like Devon I don't know why, but I remember having played this game years ago and having developed a weakness for Devon 7 of the box. It's like, actually, for a super rich, super intelligent, arrogant alien prick. He seems like a pretty nice guy. 
But let's, uh, let's actually find out what his dealio is here. He's also actually willing to chat with you, which the other um, Seraphin or not, even though he's theoretically more important than them, he's their boss. Doing in a dump like this. Perhaps my standards are abnormally high, but every establishment I've been to on this planet appears to be a dump. So, what's a guy like you like to do for fun? My work is my primary pleasure. I also collect art treasures, and I enjoy a good wager as much as any Sraffin. What do you like to bet on? Anything and everything. The only trouble is most wagers are just so drearily predictable. I like a good bet myself. Maybe you and I could... What an absurd concept. Uh, what wager could you possibly propose that would interest me? I'll bet... I'll bet I can guess how much your latest planet cost you. Oh, please. That amount is already recorded in the log of the Association of Planetary Realtors. Nigga, please. do better than that. Okay, then I'll bet, uh, I'll bet that I can guess your private code name for your deal. You almost begin to amuse me, alias Node. I will make that wager. Okay, now he's still arrogant, but he's willing to give you a hearing, which is more than you're getting out of the other guys. So let's ask him about uh, future deals. Why not? The future, Conan? What have you got in the pipeline? With the profits from my current deal, I will ascend to a new level trading entire star systems and even small clusters. Every Seraphin aspires to such a goal, but few reach it. I bet the deal you just finished was a biggie, huh? I've had my eye on Armpit 3 for a long time, but Erk 4 was obstinate about selling her share. Then I received signals from an intermediary that she was finally willing to deal. It was one of the most complex deals I've ever assembled. So many parties. Parties? Oh, we forgot to read about Sir Athens before going into his flashback, now that I think about it. Oh, well. We'll just have to make do. Uh, I did read about them off screen. Well, here he is in the tub playing with the. Oh, jeez, game. Uh, I did read about them off screen. The only thing that I remember. What I remember about them that would be of important for you guys to know. Uh, their name structure is basically they have a name and then a number and the lower the number the more important they are it's like an actual social registry of some kind or it refers like it's a class system where like the lower your number the higher your class and class is all about having like money and you know business stuff and uh, the running gag with them is that they're all incredibly rich they're smarter than the other species they're incredibly eccentric and they don't look good in hats that's like a big thing that they are like sensitive about is the fact that they don't look good in hats but we don't have much time left in this video anyway so let's just uh, wander around a bit see what's going on with uh, Devin Seven's uh, super cool pad this is where I unwind and let down my tentacles the warm gelatin is neuroengineered to stimulate the pleasure receptors beneath the surface of my skin. Okay. Uh, Dinette set. A family of artisans on Bulbous Three spent four generations crafting this set. I was able to purchase it with about two hours of my wages. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's rich, you see. At a spot of dust, your robo mate your robo mate is performing superbly. You can see the distant bubbles of the vacation homes dotting the otherwise forbidding surface of Nernia Twelve, the closest of Hapoctal's moons. Oh yeah, the other thing is that the home, their home planet of Hapoctal, like uh, you know, a square inch of space is like a billion gajillion mega credits or what the fuck ever, you know. I inherited this piece from my Grand Warden after he disintegrated. As a financial investment, it is the keystone in my collection of Seraphin pre-post-moderns. But, frankly speaking, I think the artist may have taken a few too many jolts to the brain. Oh, and uh, they get intoxicated by applying electricity directly to their brains. It's all stuff that I should have just read for you, and maybe I will in the next video. 
But now we're at the half hour mark, so I really should be wrapping this up. But, oh, let's have at least one more little wacky fun moment here before we go. He's got Whistler's mother. A cobweb. I will have every robo-servant reprogrammed post-haste. Examine. I bought this piece in a small bazaar on Deneb 4. I was convinced I had stumbled across a copy of Great Worth, probably the work of one of the 21st century Earth Master Forgers, Luggo Jenkins, Gus Tarkington, even Ernie Fastcar Monroe. You can't imagine my furor when I discovered several years later that the piece is actually the original Whistler, and therefore worth gigazox less than I had thought. I had been swindled. I moved the piece to this back hallway so that I would be less frequently reminded of my naivete. And there you have it, folks. The original Whistler is... The original Whistler's mother is currently... Oh, there's another, like, actual real painting. Sorry. This fine forgery of a Surat painting set you back almost 300 megazox. Yeah, so that's the, that's the gag here. Is, uh, you know... Whistler's mother ends up on the wall of somebody who hangs it there to remind him of his own naivete because he thought he had purchased a much more valuable forgery. At any rate, folks, we're going to call it a video here. When we come back, we'll continue. I'll either, I've got to make up my mind, we'll either wander around and read about the Seraphins and then come back into this, or we'll just wander around in Devon Seven's apartment some more. Uh, Devon Seven's apartment, by the way, is, um, you know, like to, to purchase. Uh, some of the dust from his apartment would be more than you will learn in your lifetime, etc., etc. So I uh, hope you enjoy. Thanks for watching, folks, and I'll see you next time.